The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We've got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, but really, folks, we're going to have to wait about five hours till 2 p.m. Eastern time. Today, we get a Fed announcement, Fed Day. Uh, we have some economic data already this morning with ADP payrolls. We got non farm payrolls on Friday. We got some big earnings. You got Snapchat trading lower this morning. You got Peloton trading higher. We get some big tech earnings on Thursday. We get Alphabet. Google. We get Amazon and we get Apple all Thursday after the bell, let alone we get a Fed announcement at 2 p.m. Expect a 25 percent hike pretty much priced in. What's Chairman Powell going to say at 2.30 p.m. Eastern time in terms of the rhetoric, the attitude going forward? It's going to be an interesting one, folks. We're talking about higher prices in terms of, yeah, you're negative by 15 points right now in the S&Ps, folks. But look where we are, man. You were just at a price point of 4,091 back to a five minute chart. All we're doing right now, folks, yeah, you're down by 15 points, but we're back to where we were in the last 10 minutes of trading yesterday. You accelerate higher. We're nearing 4,100. Lofty prices coming into a Fed meeting where it seems like there is optimism. Uh, the market is disagreeing with the Fed, right? That's the bottom line. They're saying we don't believe that you're going to be higher for longer. We'll see what Chairman Powell has to say because there's a distinct possibility that he's going to be pretty strong with his rhetoric that, hey, why is everybody getting way ahead of things? There's a case to be made, okay, when they get into that May meeting. We're talking about three full months away from now. By the time you get to the May meeting, there is a realistic possibility that the data does line up over the next three months. But, boy, we've seen how three months can really just miss the mark on some of the numbers that the market's been looking for. We'll see where we go. But, nonetheless, market's given up some of the gains that we've had recently. Pretty marginal action right now. I'd call it almost flat, considering the run-up we had yesterday. NASDAQ 100, you're negative by one-tenth percent. Dow's catching a bid lower this morning. You're off by 190 points, off just by about half a percent, just under 34,000. We get the S&Ps, negative by five. Bitcoin, holding up relatively well, above 23,000 this morning. Crude, at 78.94, I saw some OPEC headlines hitting. Uh, they're not going to change production, something to that degree. Nonetheless, crude, $79. Gold contract, 1945. We're going to jump over to the dollar in a moment. Notes and bonds ahead of the Fed. You're getting a little bit of higher price and lower yield. The 10-year, 3.46%, 3.466 to be exact. Maybe you rounded up 3.47%, just under 3.5%. The yield on the 10-year, you get the 30-year, up a full point almost at 130.27. We jump over to the volatility index as this market just marches higher, man. Uh, I say, you know, we're negative by 10 points, folks. That is nothing. The run we had yesterday in the S&Ps was, what, 70, 80 points, something like that. VIX right now, you see the fall off on the VIX yesterday and a strong day in the markets. Right now, you're sitting at 1968. Let's jump around to the currencies. Dollar index, they're talking about it in the den this morning, man. Yeah, getting hammered. You're at 101.72 on the dollar. You take a look at the dollar on a daily. You've been shopping around at the 618 of the full move higher from 95 to 115, we'll call it. You're back to about the 102 area. That's where we've been shopping around. Negative action today on the dollar on the same day that we're getting a little bit of higher price in terms of on the yield, right? So we're getting lower rates. We're getting a weaker dollar. And we're coming into a Fed decision. Interesting. Uh, now, here's what I'll say about that. A little bit later in the program, I'm going to take a look at some of the dates where we've had a Fed meeting. All right? You know what? I'll kick it off with this one because I'm pretty sure. I wanted to get the dates exactly. But I'm pretty sure that this one lines up because I recall it, man. Uh, where's our acceleration? There it is. March 15th. I believe that was a Fed day. Maybe somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but pretty certain that that was a Fed day when they started to hike. Right. And what would you do? You went from forty one hundred to forty what? Six twenty one. You went up over 10 percent in the period of about two weeks. Point is. Buy the rumor, sell the news. A lot of this priced in, in terms of what we're talking about here, which is 25 basis points. Um, 
a lot of risk to a strong statement from the chairman. And nonetheless, we go towards May. May is going to be an interesting one, man. The data is going to become uber important as we approach that May meeting because we're going to get January numbers, February numbers, and March numbers all before we get the May decision. That's three months of economic data that we don't have right now. Okay, now we're going to get some of that data ahead of the meeting that takes place in early March or so. No, March 21st, 22nd, I believe is their March meeting. So we're going to get some of that data. But if you start to go out to the May meeting, if anybody tells you they're confident what's going to happen in the May meeting, what they're really telling you is they're confident what the data is going to say over the next three months. That's a tough one to have too much confidence in right now. The trend is there, but three months of data can go either way, as we know. All right. And what am I going to kick it off with? I'm going to kick it off with some Fed speak, man. Wall Street, uh, the headline over at Bloomberg, we want lower rates, the Fed not so fast. And the headline here is that Wall Street's making the same Fed bet that's burned it repeatedly, okay? And that bet is bidding up stocks and bond prices in hopes that the central bank would declare, declare victory over inflation. Well, the clock is ticking, man, because if we're 90 days out, folks, and we're coming into that May meeting, and you're not confident that the Fed is confident that we have the ability to pause and let things play out, then that's going to be a different story because, man, that is what the market is pricing in right now, man. The market is pricing in, folks. 25 now, 25 in March. We get the indication. We stop in May. You give it some time. Inflation goes down, and maybe by the end of the year, it's down so far that the Fed is able to pair the hikes to get off the uber-restrictive policy. That'll be the word of the day. Uh, no pun intended for the stock uber. But to get them off of that very, very restrictive policy in terms of having a, a rate at five, five plus percent when realistically anything over the growth rate that you're having is restrictive, right? Well, we're not growing at 5% anymore, I don't think. So there you go. Even the strong GDP numbers, right? What, two to three percent maximum. So restrictive policy in there, pulling back at some degree. Um, yeah, but we're going to see the press, press conference today, man. And, you know, the last thing that Chairman Powell wants is for things to start loosening up and anticipate that the Fed cycle's over and that you don't need to fight the Fed anymore and you can loosen back up. Because, man, we are not at those levels, that's for sure. We're at like 4 to 5% right now. Maybe it we're at 3%. We got some good numbers on wages, right? But you can't loosen the wheels at like 4% and expect you're going back down to 2 at least as the chairman. You can't loosen them at 4 to 5%. And that's essentially what you'd be doing if you let the market get ahead of you, especially OK, so he, I imagine, is going to come out as strong as he can while leaving himself room to do exactly what the market is pricing in for sure. OK, he's going to leave room for that because you can always change your mind if the data lines up. Right. And he's going to talk about being data dependent. Um, but, yeah, he's going to try and put that out there while leaving himself some wiggle room. But, man, I mean, prior press conferences, prior speeches, I remember when he said that, you know, they're not even going to think about cutting until they're sure inflation's going back down to 2%. I said, 2%, man, are you still really going to hang on 2%? Because if you're hanging on 2% and we stick at around 3%, how far are you willing to go? But he seemed pretty confident, and that's the message he's going to put out. Uh, how strong is he going to be with some of the rhetoric that he comes out at 2.30? We've got five hours and 16 minutes to wait for the press conference. Uh, just under that. For the announcement at 2 p.m., we'll see what they say in the announcement as well. Stay tuned, folks. we got some great interviews. Kevin Hanks is next. Our man, Teddy Kegstack, coming up at 40 past the hour. We'll be right back, folks. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps off slightly, negative by about 12 points right now, trading at 4,077. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks, folks. Every trading day, 12 o'clock Eastern time, fast market from the TD Ameritrade Network right here on Tiger TV. Your host, Kevin Hinks, Tom White, the whole team at TD, Ameri TD Ameritrade Network, folks. They got great guests. They walk you through hypothetical trade setups. We got earnings and we got a Fed day. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yeah, this is big as it gets today. A lot of, uh, you know, of all the things that you're going to consume and digest this week in terms of financial data and earnings, the biggest market mover this week is still going to be Jerome Powell speaking today around 1.30 Chicago time, 2.30 Eastern, Tommy. So the way he sets the tone in terms of Fed policy going forward, the reason – that don't fade the Fed is a cliche, there, there, there's a reason it's like that, Tommy, because the Fed always wins. So the tone that he sets should affect stocks and especially rates going forward, Tommy. So, yeah, it's going to be a big day. How he sets the tone will be extremely important. It's pretty interesting. We get the announcement at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, press conference at 2.30. We got the market sitting at pretty lofty levels, man. Quite a day yesterday. S&P's up almost 80 points from the low to the high as we close out with quite an acceleration into the close yesterday. Um, talking about risk, Evan, right? First, do you, do you think the market, and this is, listen, we're, not that we're guessing, but it's tough to know where we go, folks, in terms of if they told you, Kevin, well, we're going to go up by 25 basis points, as is expected, um, and and I see, you know, it's like, what do you think could be said? Let's say, do you think there's symmetrical risk in the market right now? Is guess what I'm trying to wrap my head around because I see the S&Ps at 4,100. I see the market pricing in a scenario where inflation has kind of abated. We might be on that trend and maybe we're towards a trend where the May meeting is possibly where they cut. Do you see the market having the possibility to rally higher from this level, kind of similar to the risk that the chairman comes out maybe stronger than some expect? Or how does your brain compare those two scenarios right now um, with with the, the the conference, the press conference like you're talking about being so big this afternoon? Tommy, I don't we don't ever say never and we don't ever say always. But I think people betting on a second half of the year rate cut. I don't think that's probable unless and I always say there's unless unless there's a market changing event that would cause that to happen. But 
I don't think Jerome Powell is raising rates here just to lower them in the back half of the year. I think that would be a mistake by him. And he has guided or alluded to the fact that that's not his plan. So even though the market's pricing that in, the only way that would happen is some event, Tommy. So I think what Jerome Powell wants to do is get rates where they where they need to be, a restrictive level. I don't know what that level is. Right now, there's a big divergence between where the Fed thinks over 5% and where the market is saying currently about 3.5%. So there's something's got to give there. And then Jerome Powell, how he sees inflation. Remember, Tommy, he's got two mandates. Unemployment and inflation. And right now, unemployment is not a problem at 3.5%. Inflation is a big problem, and it's his legacy involved. So I think with a S&P 5.7% for the month, with a NASDAQ of 9.6% for the month, he's got free reign to be pretty hawkish here, Tommy. Yeah, you're making some great points, man. I agree with a lot of it, and I can't wait to just see how the market may react if that's what happens, because I feel like that's a very reasonable statement you're making, you know, that a lot of people would agree with. And I'm I'm interested to see if that's what he does, and he comes out with the 25 basis points, but it comes out pretty strong, just like you're talking about, saying we're not there yet, man, you know, however he phrases that, however strong he is. And then we get to find out what the market thinks of those words, man. We find out today it's going to be an interesting one. With that in mind, Kevin, we're marching on, man. We got earnings, big earnings coming up tomorrow. We already got some out today. What are you guys talking about on Fast Market at 12 today, Kevin? Well, obviously, the focus of the show today will be Meta coming out with earnings after the bell. And then, since tomorrow has so many good names coming out, we'll probably trade like a Starbucks or com or, or that in the other two because – Amazon, Apple, and Alphabet, but too many stocks to actually cover in one show. So I, I imagine Meta for sure and probably Qualcomm and Starbucks today, Tommy. Nice. And I got Meta up here well off of the lows yesterday. What would you think of Snapchat? Meta trading a little bit lower today on those Snapchat numbers. Man, Snapchat, you talk about some woes down um, double-digit percentages and obviously hitting Facebook today. What would you think of those numbers, man? Tommy, digital ad spend is the weakness that's going to permeate all these names going forward. It's going to, you saw it in snap.com. So Meta is going to be heavy, Google, Amazon, Apple, possibly Airbnb. Then you can go Netflix, you can go Disney Plus, all of which would be in pressure, Dave, with, with, the, with, with uh, Snap's miss in terms of revenue. Because why? These All these companies rely on digital ad spend, and digital advertising is weak, Tommy. So that's where I think some of the problems lie ahead. We, you know, we've had really good results so far in terms of banks and in terms of airlines. Now we're getting into mega cap, and a lot of them you know, rely on a couple of things. The cloud, which is slowing, and digital advertising, which is slowing. So that presents a couple of problems in, in the near future, Tommy. How is Mr. Zuckerberg going to spend $10 billion a year on AI, man, if, if Facebook and Instagram aren't taking in all those ad dollars, right? Uh, a lot going on. Kevin, we appreciate it as always, man. We'll be watching the show at 12 o'clock today. Can't wait to find out how today goes, and we'll talk to you tomorrow as well, man. Fuck a lot, Tommy. It's going to be a big one today. That's right. Folks, tune in. You heard it. It's a great day, man. They'll be talking some equities. We still have earnings on top of the Fed. And yeah, it'll be an interesting one. Meta shares I have up here from 149. You're at about 147. You see the drop off last night on those snap numbers. Quite a drop off, right? We've clawed back some of that. Interesting in terms of clawing back a lot of those losses. Meanwhile, we have the market in negative territory. And you got the, you know, you got Meta basically just negative with the market action at 148 this morning from where you were yesterday because, boy, those Snapchat numbers, we'll get into them later. But yeah, you don't drop double digit percentages, folks, if it's a good deal. I believe they had, and I was reading it this morning, maybe if you can correct me if I'm wrong in the den, but I believe it was the first time they had actually shrinking revenue since they've been public. I believe they went public in 2017. When do we go back? This is, yeah, March of 2017. Uh, they push it out somewhere in the range of 20 to $30 on that opening month. And you're at about 20 the next month and one month after that. And then what? Guess what? You're still in a half, a 50% losing position if you had bought that thing on IPO five or six years later for Snapchat. Quite a roller coaster ride in between from four bucks up to 84. 
teaches you, man. Never think you know more than the market, folks. That is quite a chart, you know? You can't take a profit if you never sell, man, on some of these equities because, boy, it doesn't take long. And many people did not expect, folks, that you could go from the COVID lows to eight times the price of that and give it all back. And there's been many, many equities that have done it. Zoom, right? Up to 588, you give it all back. You're at 75. The most interesting part of Zoom is Zoom makes money. OK, so you got way out of whack on earnings multiples of growth of even companies that are profitable. It's very easy to get out of whack on companies that are losing money, because what's the theoretical value of a company that's losing money? It's all based on the hypothesis of what they're going to make in the future. Well, pretty much the same thing happened with Zoom uh, up to 588. Nonetheless, Snap trading lower, Meta trading lower. going to be an interesting open ahead of the Fed. Stay tuned, folks. We've got a lot to talk about. We'll be right back to that market open. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You got an S&P negative by 12 points to kick things off. NASDAQ 100 barely in the red by 15 points. You got the Dow off about half a percent right now. Dow probably getting hit by some of the equities uh, in that Dow in terms of maybe earnings driven. Not sure exactly which stock is driving the Dow down to negative action, but Dow leading the way off six tenths percent right now. And you got the Russell off by a quarter percent right now. Jumping over to that article that I was talking about earlier in the program, talking about what the market is looking for versus what the Fed is looking for, right? Wall Street wants lower rates, the Fed not so fast. 
Uh, just a couple things that I want to point out in this article that caught my eye, okay? Talking about where we actually are, okay? The bulls, okay, now what they're talking about in this article here is that the Fed's grappling with a market that doesn't believe them, right? This is kind of what Kevin was talking about. Are you talking about cuts this year? Really? Uh, so you have to think the Fed as performative. And this is some analyst, uh, let's see, uh, investment management president, CEO, Thornburg Investment Management, okay? Nonetheless, Powell and the other members, um, what they're saying is what they need to say in terms of strong rhetoric, talking about staying the course, okay? Expect more tough inflation fighting rhetoric from Powell and the other members. Now, it's possible, of course, as they say, that the optimism on the trading floors proves warranted this time around in the January rally turns out to be the start of a big broad market rebound that Wall Street so desperately wants. Here's the part I want to get to. The bulls point repeatedly to one thing. Inflation has finally mercifully begun to abate. The CPI clocked in at 6.5% in December down from 9.1. Moreover, there are mounting signs that further declines are to come. I agree with all of that. Did you just see the number they pointed to, folks? I mean, that's why you really got to temper your optimism, I think, and at least be aware that the data really has a lot to do over the next three months to line up in May. I think you're going to see some pretty strong rhetoric, and I actually just can't wait to find out what the market does when you get that strong rhetoric, because I think the market just may not believe them again. Because I think you have to understand that the chairman's not going to ease things just yet. When you're talking about articles that are pointing to the fact that it's at 6.5% in December. And that is going to allow the Fed to possibly begin cutting later this year. That's very tough. Uh, the market's pricing in rate cuts. It's already seeing the data roll over. This is J.P. Morgan portfolio manager. So the Fed's going to try keep trying to communicate higher for longer. But the market is already looking through it. Well, we're going to get some strong words today, I imagine. That's my guess, okay? Doesn't mean that the market's going to sell off rapidly. It's possible. We get to find out. Um, but as they talk about here, right? You know, you think you know best, as in you think you know that the data over the next three months is going to go well. Well, I mean, this the Fed and Wall Street blindsided by the inflation spike, okay? And that links to an article from December of last year just talking about how wrong everyone was. Yeah, they talk about J.P. Morgan. What were they talking about? 5,000 by the end of last year. Oppenheimer, how about 5,300? Yeah, way off. Why were they way off? Yeah, inflation, folks, in a big way, and that resulting in a Fed that had to hike things more aggressive than I've ever seen in my, in my um, lifetime. Um, ever since the late 80s, young traders, investors, analysts have been schooled in the ways of the Fed put a belief that policymakers were always there to prop up the markets. And that all went away because we dealt with generational inflation for the first time ever and that we are still dealing, OK, with a CPI number in December. And there are other numbers out there. OK, I get it. But got to keep in mind the last CPI print was 6.5 percent, folks. The other thing to keep in mind is that in, I think when you've been hearing this, crude has been very friendly lately to the overall prices of everything. We're still in a downtrend practically, okay? You've been chopping around at this price level since basically September, but you can see that even in November, we were up to 93.74 in the price of crude. And now we're sitting at 78.90. That could be a driving factor that boosts costs a bit. We'll see where we go. Lots of data. We get a lot more information tonight. And let's jump around to what else we have going on. So. How about ChatGPT unleashes stock trader temp stampede for everything AI? Uh, what was it? BuzzFeed that talked about they were going to go all in on AI generated content. Stock goes up by 100%. I believe they had the most volume ever or something like that in terms of how they're doing it. And folks, it is a game changer, man. It's that simple. It's a game changer. Now, my dad was talking about last night that OpenAI has released a tool to be able to find content that has been generated by their AI created chats, et cetera, right? So let's say you're teaching a class, you write, you give an assignment, write 500 words on whatever topic you want, the founding of America, okay? You can then run those answers through a program that'll tell you whether that is an AI generated written piece of material or a human piece of material. The problem is, okay, is that he was going over last night is that first of all, you have instances where they're not catching all of them, okay? So somebody turns in a computer-generated 
assignment. And these are just assignments. It's going to get a lot more important than just assignments in terms of what is true, what is not, what is written by computers, what is written by humans. Uh, first of all, they could not catch every instance of a computer generated. But the, the worst part is that sometimes when they identified it as a AI generated chat or written piece of material, that it actually wasn't. It was like one out of 10 times it would flag something as AI generated and guess what, it was written by a human. Yeah, so there's there's gonna be a back and forth here, okay? But it is going to change things dramatically. You're seeing BuzzFeed, right? <clears throat> BuzzFeed, can you imagine? You're gonna be able to crank out articles, you know, with three clicks of a button and a computer and it's done. Very hard to underestimate how quickly that's gonna be able to change certain industries and certain areas of what's getting done. Customer service. Etc. cetera. Uh, what did I have up here? Yeah, here's the one I was, Kathy Wood. So she's having a heck of a January. S percentages on small numbers can be deceiving, okay? Um, robots could surpass workers at Amazon by 2030. Now, she's been magnificently wrong on many accords, but you better believe it's possible, man, because many of the jobs that many low-wage workers are doing when you combine the ability of robotics and AI, it's, uh, again, very difficult for the human mind, I think, to imagine how quickly that could change in especially some areas. I mean, Amazon bought a robotics company for like a billion dollars. I'll look it up at the break. A long time ago, man. Maybe they mentioned it in this article. And all they really were using that robotics company for was for their warehouses. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll look that up. Maybe somebody in the den has it. They bought some robotics company in like 2017, 2019 for about a billion dollars, man. And, and it's for warehouse rob robots. So you combine all that stuff, how that industry changes. You better believe that investors are going to try and get ahead of the curve in a big way. And yeah, let's jump around to her equity. Why not? Because it has been quite a run on all these equities. Ark, what are you talking about here? You come into the year at what? What do we close out? About 31 bucks, yeah, you're going to be up about 30% for the month of January. That's a great number. Keep in mind, though, on December 13th, you were trading at 38.38. So that's the problem with doing stuff like that, okay? Uh, the January 1st marker on a lot of markers, yeah, it was a heck of a month of December, and we came in basically at the lows. And what have you done? You've gotten back to basically the consolidation area. This was in from about $35 to $40 for the better part of September before you traded lower on December 13th. Yeah, heck of a run, man. Oh, boy. As I mentioned, you go back five years, folks. He's on a five-year time horizon. Basically, even on this equity over five years, even after the month of January. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back. We'll talk some Forex with our man, Teddy Kegstad. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. 
Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps right now, negative by about eight points, trading at 4,081. We jump over to the dollar index. Dollar index right now, negative by about 33 ticks, trading at 101.76. Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstad. Folks, you can read Teddy's outstanding Tiger Forex report. He comes out with a new issue every Monday, uh, updates throughout the week when warranted. You get access to a 60-minute webinar he did with subscribers, talking about Forex strategies and fundamentals, what is behind the Tiger Forex report. You right on the newsletter tab, you subscribe, folks. You get it for a month. It's $97. You get the webinar as well. If you're not happy with it, it's just something you're not using. Maybe you're not trading with the Forex enough. You cancel it. You get your money back. Please try it out. The webinar itself, the newsletter, you learn a tremendous amount. And in this market, man, uh, Forex, so important to what's going on across the globe right now. Teddy Kegstack, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. So we got a Fed day today. Uh, you want to kick things off on your thoughts on basically what to expect at 2 o'clock, 2.30, and maybe how that may impact some of the markets? Sure, sure, absolutely. Um, well, I mean, it's pretty much built in that the Fed's going to do a quarter uh, point hike. Now, the, the interesting thing is that, you know, we've talked about this before, that they're going to spread out a quarter point on this meeting and then another quarter point on the next meeting. And then, you know, the mainstream media says that they're going to stop and then maybe even start cutting in the future. Uh, that would not make any sense, especially with what they've been doing. Um, you got to realize that we're raising a quarter point. The ECB just raised a half a point. They're going to raise another half a point. So what does that really mean net net with the markets? Well, now that the other central banks, especially Japan, that in another two months may raise their rates, you know, that has a big impact on what the Fed has been doing. You know, it counteracts everything that they've been doing for the past year. So I think that no matter, even though that the numbers come out, like with inflation, you know, you mentioned I saw earlier about the pullback, you know, it's at a six point whatever percent versus nine point whatever percent. The reality is, is inflation still out of control. It's just not accelerating at the rapid rate that it was before, you know. So and the reality is that the Fed, if what they had intended to do was to curb inflation by raising rates. If other central banks are raising rates, they have to continue raising rates at least to some degree. Because every time the other banks raise and we don't, that starts to negate what we've done. You know, so and I think that since they're the other banks are behind the curve and most likely don't have the bullets that we have, we're going to continue to raise rates into the rest of the year, no matter what. As long as the ECB, and especially if Japan raises in the spring, and God forbid there's a thought that they may raise again further, absolutely, I think we're going to see that the Fed is not going to stop raising rates. If anything, you could probably expect a quarter point at every single meeting throughout the rest of the year. Oof, you hear that one, folks? I like it. Boy, that's going to be an interesting market, man. And who knows? I, you know, I... At, at a bare minimum, Teddy, and I think I mentioned it to you last week, or I know we've been talking about it, and we've talked about that May meeting, we just get so much data in between now and then as well that mm -hmm. to get ahead of it 
as in I think the market case right now is much more closer to like the bull case in terms of everything going as maybe you'd hope or expect as a market participant versus mm -hmm. where the probabilities really line up, even for those those three months of data that we get. And I know we get some of them before the March meeting, but you know we get January, February, and March data, and we're just coming out of January, man, and there's definitely some volatility. And it is sure. pretty amazing, like I mentioned earlier, that you know the bulls in that article was saying the bulls could be right because inflation could be abating because it's at six and a half percent. And in any other universe, you you know, you go six and a half percent. Hold on, wait a can second. I, can so I add one more point percent. about inflation, Tommy? Um, let's just say we're in a vacuum, okay? And we stop raising rates after the next meeting, okay? If other central banks are raising rates, what does that mean? We're gonna have inflation because other currencies are gonna gain versus the dollar, which means imports become more expensive. And if imports are more expensive, wouldn't that be inflation? It's a great point. I was gonna ask you the question to lead you to talk about it towards the end of this because you had <laughs> talked about just them raising rates and not a lot of people are really having that type of that conversation saying, well, you have to compare it to the world and the comparison of rates across the world because if they start raising rates, Right then, what's going to happen? Demand is going to be for the higher rates over there. That's going to be demand for other currencies versus our currency. Our currency will be lower. And just like you said, we've been helped by the fact that we've had such a strong dollar. And if that starts trading lower, then inflation comes back. And I'm sure Chairman Powell knows that, even if they're not talking about that. Um, I would hope so. <laughs> yeah. Right. Exactly. And I'm sure he knows. You know, I, I'm not sure if you heard Kevin Hinks talking about legacy. I've talked. Man, he's got a lot on the table right now, and it seems like there's a huge risk for him going early. And there's really not really a need to right now in terms of why why is there a need to um, even talk about that when what is the risk, right? Well, we have indicators. Right. Maybe there's the lag. That's that's the other side of that. They don't want to be too late to the party when it's obvious it's it's too low. But boy, I'd like to hear somebody make that argument in terms of possibly them being too late, right? I mean, how can right. it be too late with where we are right now? Um, Jumping around to some of the currencies, Teddy. I mean, we've been chopping around a bit kind of in some of these areas, whether it's the dollar, the euro. We've talked about the yen. Uh, what are some of the currencies that jump out at you you want to talk about? Okay, well, everything has been in a very sideways trade going into this Fed meeting and over the – I mean, from the holidays into now, it's been a very tough trade in most of the currencies. I mean, you're, you're getting beaten up in the pound. You're getting beaten up in the Swiss. You know, I think that right now, if you want to look for – where you're going to see volatility and maybe catch some good swings. It's the Australian dollar, U.S. dollar trade, believe it or not, just because that one seems to be a little bit freer and moving. You know, the pound is, I mean, talk about a tough trade. I mean, consolidating and trying to break out doesn't want to move. You know, there's, there's a lot of conflictions there. The euro obviously has been a grinding bull, you know, and the question is, is how much, how long can that one hold, you know? So, and I think that everyone's riding the ECB right now, um, but that's a tough one because the EU is in a lot of trouble financially. Their fundamentals, even if they keep on raising rates, their fundamentals are horrible over there. You know, I mean, when we go, we're in the first quarter now, I guarantee you come six months from now, we're in the third quarter of next year, the EU is going to be struggling. I mean, when I say struggling, they're going to be in a lot of trouble, you know. So, I mean, the numbers are just progressively – inflation is not the only problem they have there. They have a lack of production, you know, and a lack of production in a, in a very industrial area such as the EU when you combine the countries, that's a big problem, especially with Germany, you know. So, and, and another problem is, is that a lot of the production they have now is going towards the Ukraine conflict. So, that doesn't – bode well at all, you know, because who's paying yeah. for that? The taxpayers are paying for it and it's being funded through the bond market too, you know, so that doesn't help out the population of the country, you know, and I think you're going to really start to see these things tap in to the EU, especially come the middle of the summer going to next fall, unless all of a sudden we have peace in the, you know, in the, uh, in that area, which I don't see that happening anytime soon. The data soon. can always change, right, Teddy? I Correct. don't know the probability, Correct. but the data can always change. I hear you. As in, yeah, it's, uh, and as you know, Kevin Hinks, I don't know if you heard him, he was saying, you know, just in the Fed cutting, right? Well, things can change, mm -hmm. of course. You know, it's not impossible here, folks. They're but not going to cut. That's yeah, a, that's, now, a, that's a that's a false media pr prop. I can I notes. hope I don't see what's happening to have them cutting. Let's put it that yeah. way. You know, in terms of right. man, it would take a tremendous amount of decimation in the markets, let alone what's happening with inflation. You well, know, Teddy, what would make them cut. You know, one no. last point: the only way that they would cut is if 
Joe Biden comes in and says, why aren't you helping me out? We need to cut rates instead of raising rates. And I don't see that happening at all or them listening no. to him either. What do you got? You got a Blackhawks jersey on today? I do. I do. I love it. I'll get we're, my we're, Lightning we're, jersey. We're heading into the, jersey you know, next it's, time. It's midway through the season now, you know, it's the break, all-star break and the Hawks are finally starting to show some life. So That's we're at right. the bottom. We got to jump off, Teddy. I appreciate it as always, man. Have Thanks. a great week. We'll talk to you next Wednesday. Sure. Folks, we'll Thank be right back after the break. 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den. Available to all Tigers and Tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs. And join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well. So it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps. Almost turning green right now. We got the Russell by positive by two points. We got the S and P's basically flat. Nasdaq 100 basically flat. Dow negative by 136 and jumping around. So some of the Fed in terms of where they were hiking. Okay, interesting to see in terms of buy the rumor, sell the news. A lot of optimism coming into this meeting. Really going to be interesting to see how the market reacts if we get that strong rhetoric that many people think you should get from the chairman, considering where we are, the discussion we just had with Teddy, etc. Now. It is interesting when you take a look at the hiking cycle that they've been on. First of all, take a look at the hiking cycle, okay, in terms of the dates. They come in last year in March with 25. May, they come in at 50. They go four meetings at 75, okay? Then they go to 50 in December, and here we are, okay? So they go 25, 50 on the liftoff. They're probably going to go 50, 25 to come down. Do they go one more 25? They probably do. But checking out the dates real quick. So the first hike, okay, was... March 15th, 16th, they have it 17th here. Uh, basically, 
it was the first time you got the acceleration. So they hike by 25 basis points around here, the market accelerates higher, okay? May 5th is their next meeting. Where are we? That is the real drop off. You go to 50, things probably getting out of hand there. Market, where do you come to next? June 16th, folks. That's the first time they went to 75. The point being, okay, you see how many times on this chart, on the S&Ps, June 16th, that's when they hiked 75 for the first time. What did the market do? The market proceeded to rally from 3,700 up to above 4,300. Now, there's been times on other sides it's done that, but don't overestimate, don't underestimate, hear that again, don't underestimate the ability for the market to get ahead of itself here, okay, and to have all of that priced in. That's what happened when you got the first high, uh, cut, so much negative action priced in, you actually got a lift. That's what happened the first time you got a hike by 75 basis points in June. What happened? Well, the market had already traded at 3,700, folks. It traded higher. We get to see if the reverse is going to happen right now. S&P is coming in at 4,086. Thanks for starting your day off with me, folks. Stay tuned. Live programming all day. We've got our man Basil Chapman coming up next. Steve Rhodes, Fast Market. He'll be talking meta shares as well as some others. Larry Pesvento, Dave White, Tom O'Brien this afternoon. Have a great Wednesday, everybody. See you tomorrow.